So you want to find the top speed of your rig. First, we'll start by pretending we live in a perfect world. And after we calculate that awesome speed, we'll add back in the sad elements of reality. Rolling resistance, aerodynamic drag, and speed limiters. There's a few basic specifications we need to know for our calculations. Let's get dirty. The first step is to find your max engine RPM. This iForce 5.7 V8 is capable of about 5,950 RPM. The second step is to know what your highest gears ratio is in your transmission. In this case, the six-speed overdrive automatic has a top gear ratio of 0.59 to 1. The third step is knowing what your final drive ratio or your differential ratio is. In this case, 4.3 to 1 rear end. The fourth step is to measure the diameter of your tire. 32 inches sharp. Let's go do some math. So now we have specifications and dimensions from our vehicle that we can plug into this formula and we can find out what the top mechanical speed is of our rig. So we start with RPM, 5,950 was the max on that. We divide it by transmission ratio, 0.59. We divide that by the differential ratio, 4.3. Then we multiply that by the tire circumference in miles. Now remember, we measure the tire diameter in inches. So how are we gonna get from there to there? Well, we take 32 inches, the tire diameter, multiply it by 3.142 or pi. And we divide by 12 inches, cancel the inches, turn it into feet, divide it by 5,280 feet, cancel the feet, turn it into miles. That means our circumference in miles of the tire is 0 0.001587. Bring that down here, multiply, divide, have lots of fun. And we need to multiply it by 60 to get it into hours because it was in minute. RPM, revolutions per minute, we turn out with 223 miles per hour. Now remember, that is the mechanical top speed in a world with no air, no hills, no speed limiters, none of that nasty stuff. Now let's get back to real life, which is more like this. So can my Tundra really go 223 miles an hour in the real world? Let's find out by factoring the two largest variables, aerodynamic drag and rolling resistance. We need to know a few more specifications, some of which you can easily Google all of which you can not so easily calculate. We need to know the weight, coefficient of rolling resistance, drag coefficient, frontal area, air density, and velocity. We'll start with calculating the aerodynamic drag on our vehicle at its top mechanical speed, which is 223 miles an hour. The way you calculate the aerodynamic drag is one half times the density of air times the velocity squared times the drag coefficient times the frontal area. In my case, one half times 0 0.0019 slugs per cubic foot times 327 feet per second squared times 0.37, which is our vehicle's drag coefficient, times 33.5 square feet, which is the frontal area of the vehicle. This is easily calculated by measuring the width and height of the vehicle and multiplying that by 0.83. The result that you get from multiplying out all these variables is the amount of aerodynamic drag coming against your vehicle. In this case, 1,259 pounds. For simplicity's sake, I've decided not to take into account the air lift and the downforce possible on various surfaces of the vehicle. Next up is rolling resistance. The force required to overcome rolling resistance is easily calculated by multiplying normal force times the coefficient of rolling resistance. Normal force, in our case, is just the weight of our vehicle because we're on flat, we're not on a hill. We multiply that by the coefficient of rolling resistance, which in our case for a pneumatic rubber tire on dry asphalt will be somewhere near 0 0.015. We multiply these two together and we have 83 pounds of rolling resistance. The total amount of force required to overcome rolling resistance and aerodynamic drag at 223 miles an hour for my vehicle is 1,342 pounds pounds. We know how much force is required to overcome rolling resistance and aerodynamic drag at 223 miles an hour. But how much force is propelling us at 223 miles an hour? Is it enough? According to a dyno chart at 5,950 RPM or max RPM, my engine should be producing 290 pound-feet of torque coming out of the crankshaft. Assuming the torque converter is locked in a one-to-one -one ratio, we go right into the top overdrive ratio, 6 gear, 0.59. Multiply 290 pound-feet of torque by 0.59, then multiply it by 4.3, the differential ratio, and we get 736 pound-feet of torque coming into the wheel. After accounting for tire size and in so doing converting torque to force, 
we have 552 pounds of force hitting the road. Now that's pretty generous. That's assuming no loss from friction in the drivetrain or heat. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the 552 pounds of force that we have is less than the 1342 pounds of force that we need. All that to say, with the current conditions, my truck cannot go 223 miles an hour. We're gonna have to make some changes. While you were gone, I took the liberty to downshift from sixth gear to fifth gear and ease the throttle off from red hot 5,950 RPM to ice cold 5,500 RPM. Before, when RPMs were wound all the way up, torque had fallen quite a ways because max torque is not at red line. So by easing off RPMs, we bring the torque back up closer to max torque, thus increasing the amount of force that we can apply on the road. This made a lot of changes. First off, it changed our top speed from 223 miles an hour to 167 miles per hour. This decreased our wind load significantly down to 707 pounds. We add that to the rolling resistance, which did not change, and that comes out to a new total force required to overcome rolling resistance and aerodynamic drag to 790 pounds. How much force do we have available now? Well, we eased off the RPM down to 5,500, and that brought the torque up to 340 pound-feet coming out of the crankshaft. We downshifted from 6th to 5th gear, and that changed the training ratio to 0.73. Multiply this out again, and then account for tire size, and we have 800 pounds of force hitting the road. 800 pounds is enough to overcome 790 pounds required. So we really can go 167 miles an hour. I forgot about speed limiters! In my case, the Toyota Tundra is speed limited at 110 miles an hour. <laughs> Calculate your top speed and post the results in the comments below. Thanks for watching.